Can AI help students revise or is it all just overhyped and not as good as people say it actually is? So I'm a science teacher and I'm going to be testing an AI platform to see if it's suitable for students to use. And I'm going to be looking at GCSE science and some A-level physics. I'm going to be testing it out. I've, I've done a proper test before this video as well. I'm just going to show you some highlights and also give you my honest feedback. Now this platform is called Medley um, and it's an AI powered revision platform. It's got a huge number of questions. It's got some mock papers. It's got an online textbook as well, but obviously it's all powered by AI. But the question is, is it actually good enough for you to trust as you're doing your revision? So I'm just going to be showing this to you on my laptop. I've tried it on my iPad as well, and it works really well there. And I think one of the advantages is that when you're writing equations, it's much quicker just to write it in, in free text, and then that then scans that and actually works out what you're saying. But let's go to the laptop for the moment. Now it's uh, free to sign up and try it, but you do have to pay for the full package. So that's something to be aware of. And then what you do when you first sign into it is you choose the subjects and the exam boards that you're taking, if that's higher or foundation, and also you can put in your target grade as well. So let's have a look at GCSE physics, and this is the AQA one. Now, uh, along the tab here at the top, you've got insights, which is basically your progress across all of the modules. Um, and there's other bits and pieces at the bottom where it kind of uh, I guess gives you a streak for how many days you've actually been using it. Um, the thing that I think is most useful is when you go to practice and here you can see every part of the specification broken down by topic and then subtopic. So let's have a look at one of these. Um, energy transfers and circuits. So if I click on that you can see that this is broken down and then the number here tells you the number of marks available in those questions. So let's have a look at electrical power calculations. Um, and so if I just minimise that sidebar, we've got basically a question here. Uh, we've got the number of marks available. And then uh, at the side, you can ask Medley for help. Uh, and you can see if I just scroll across the top, there are a number of questions available. A lot of them are quite similar. So there's lots of uh, repetition. Um, and you can see that just goes on and on and on. And in actual fact, maybe one of the downsides to this is that there are so many questions, I think it would almost be impossible to finish it because there's just so much there. So when it comes to revising, it might feel a little bit overwhelming. Now, the other thing, uh, in addition to those questions, is if you click on this part up here, this brings you to the textbook. Now, I would say that this is really good information. It's clearly linked to the specification. And as a physics teacher, I think this is a really good explanation of that topic. Uh, so there's lots of stuff there. It is quite uh, word heavy, but I understand that the new versions are going to update the textbook with many more diagrams. Um, and of course, in addition to that, you can also ask Medley to teach you the lesson. Now, this is something I think can still do with a bit of work. Um, so what it does is it kind of introduces, it's kind of this kind of chatty kind of chatbot, I guess. Uh, so um, I would say the difficulty here is it doesn't really give you much to lead on to. So uh, have you ever noticed how some chargers power up your phone super fast while others are really slow, or why some light bulbs are much brighter than others? Um, so no, um, if I can say no, tell me. And then with that prompt, hopefully, it's going to start to give me more information. Uh, so it all comes down to something called electrical power. OK, I think this is quite good, actually. Um, sorry, energy per second. That's what uh, power might be a, me be a measure of. So I can just kind of go back and forwards. It's a bit more interactive than just reading text. Um, so yeah, there we go. Uh, so uh, if one watt is one joule of energy transferred every second, how much energy do you think a 60 watt light bulb transfers every second? So I'm just going to put in uh, 60 J, 60 joules, um, and hopefully we'll then realise that that's the correct answer. So I think that this is a good thing uh, that can definitely reinforce the work you've already done in class with your teachers. And then, of course, you have the questions. Uh, you can type your answers in here um, and you can do free text or just the numerical answers. And then once you've actually put, written in the answer, if there's anything you're not sure about, then um, you can say in the side and have this kind of sort of conversation to kind of actually really analyse that thought process as you're doing question after question after question. And so I think that looking at this as a teacher at GCSE, this is really, really good. One of the features of this website is it does mark the answers. So here I've got a practice question about a velocity time graph. It says in section A, the graph shows a straight line sloping upwards from the origin. 
in section B, the graph is a horizontal line. So describe the motion of the car in section A. So I'm just going to say in section A, um, accelerating. And then in section B, um, I'm going to say constant velocity. Okay, so I've just typed that in super quickly. Let's see what it says. It says, okay, two marks. Um, so yeah, I think it could have been improved, the first answer, by talking about a uniform or a constant acceleration. But yeah, constant velocity is good enough, I think. Okay, the next part. In section C, the graph shows a straight upward slope that is steeper than the slope in section A. What does it, this indicate about the acceleration of the um, car there? So I'm just going to put greater. Now, if I was really doing this for students, I'd want them to write a bit more of a sentence than that. But if I uh, mark that answer, uh, it says that's correct. Okay. Um, in section D, the graph is a straight line sloping downwards. Explain what, what this shows about the acceleration of the car and the resultant force. Okay, so um, I'm going to say that this is a negative acceleration. Um, and there's basically what the resultant force, uh, force in opposite direction to motion. Okay, actually, I'm just going to say uh, a net force. Uh, so let's see what that says if I mark that. Um, Okay, two marks, yeah, so it, it used the word net and it recognised that's the same as resultant force uh, and it's got a negative acceleration or deceleration. So yeah, I would say, actually, I've been quite impressed with uh, some of the typed answers and actually the way it's marked it so far. Now, one thing I did notice was uh, when I was doing a biology question before this video, um, it was to do with uh, respiration and yeast. And there was a mistake in the explanation that Medley gave. And it did say that uh, at slightly higher temperatures, uh, the rate of that reaction is going to increase because the yeast is moving faster and colliding with more particles per second. Now that's a correct explanation about why maybe some reactions, like chemical reactions, occur quicker at a higher temperature because there are going to be more collisions per second. But it was using that kind of model to then explain what's going on with yeast. Um, and so, yeah, I think that when it's correct, it's really good. But occasionally I have noticed a couple of occasions where Medley, the explanation is slightly wrong. But if you ask Medley about it, it still gives you that wrong explanation and it doubles down on it. Um, so, yeah, something I'll put in the description beneath this video with the kind of the full transcript of that kind of conversation. I'll put that there if you really want to look into it. Um, they are, also have exam papers, which I think is really good for revision because this gives you a bit of a mix of questions. And also, in terms of the past paper questions, I think you need to make sure that this is only one part of your revision and you use this alongside real past papers, real mark schemes and work solutions. And I think at the moment, this is really good for motivated students who spend the time learning how the platform works, but it's probably not, well, it isn't enough to replace normal teaching that teachers do to kind of really motivate students. So again, uh, if you're doing um, the physics course, I chose AQA for this one. Um, something I noticed was that when they've got the papers here, uh, some of the papers, I think, aren't available at the moment. So uh, it isn't quite complete at the moment, and I completely understand how long it takes to do this properly. Uh, when it comes to practice, um, I'm just going to choose one of these at random. Let's have a look at uh, magnetic flux density, uh, force on a current carrying wire. So we can see there's 63 um, marks worth of questions. So yeah, this one here, um, a big kind of question. Do we have a textbook, force on a current carrying wire? I'd say that looking at this, these are some good notes about what's going on. Um, I'd say as well that these things here are very um, similar to the way that the specification is, is set out for this exam board. They've got some work examples which are quite nice. And of course, um, there are things here where you can say, can you explain this concept? So again, it's very text heavy. Um, but if I just reply to that, um, you can basically go through that question and I think it tries to do that by using appropriate language for that. And I suspect as you go through question after question, um, you'll then just really reinforce that concept again and again and again. So um, I must say Medley AI 
I am actually impressed by the amount of work that they've done in a relatively short space of time. Um, there's a massive amount of subjects they've done. Uh, I think for the science and for A-level physics, they do have a huge set of questions, which if you start working your way through them, that can really help you develop. And I think there are so many questions split down by topic. If there's an area that you've identified from doing normal past papers that you're not confident with, this is something that you could use to just have masses of practice at those questions. And of course, you can do it all independently. And then if there's things that you do get stuck with, there is the option for help here and you can immediately mark your work. And so here's an A-level question I'm just gonna work through. This one is about uh, two spheres, P and Q, a fairly standard one is just dropped and falls vertically. The other one has an initial horizontal uh, velocity. Explain why they both hit the floor at the same time. So it's a three mark answer. Uh, let's just say that, um, I'm just going to put in a really brief answer that I know that's not going to get three marks. So I'm going to say the horizontal and vertical motion are independent. If I mark the answer there, uh, I reckon it's going to give me one mark for that. Yeah, um, I guess there's more things we could have added there. Uh, and actually what's good about this is it does give me uh, some clues here. So it's a three mark question, two more points needed. Um, yeah, and I guess what I could do, of course, I could always uh, re have a go at that question and answer it again. I'm not going to do it for this sake. Okay, which statement correctly compares the kinetic energies and the magnitudes of the momenta, or that's a word I haven't used before, of the two spheres just before the impact of the floor. So they will both have the same vertical velocity, but their horizontal velocity of Q will be bigger because Q is projected. So that means the kinetic energy of Q is going to be bigger and the momentum of Q is bigger as well. So I'm going to say that one there is a correct answer which it is. Okay, so those ones are fairly straightforward. So I definitely think that an advantage of this website is the way that you can uh, type in answers. It will give you where you've got the marks. It'll identify the areas that you haven't done. And of course, you can then, uh, I guess, uh, ask queries at the side if you need that. Or you can just have a go at that question again, uh, type in your new answer to see if you can get three marks. So yeah, I think that's actually something that I found, um, you know, pretty good actually, the self-marking feature is incredibly strong. So my overall impression of this particular AI platform is that it is actually really good for revision, especially because there are so many questions. There's an almost unlimited number of questions that students can have a go at asking for help along the way. If one thing that maybe one of the downsides is that it's almost an overwhelming amount of work and therefore it's going to be very hard to actually finish a section and complete a whole topic or even a whole subject before real exams. I think it has to be used alongside normal lessons, alongside normal teachers, so it's not the kind of thing that can replace the teaching that's happening in school, but I think it can be a powerful thing that you can use at times alongside other resources, alongside real past papers when it comes to revising for your exams. Anyway, do let me know if you've had a go at using Medley, if you found it useful, if it's hard to get started with, but I'd love to read your comments. I'll try and respond to all of them if you put a comment beneath this video. And yeah, go and have an explore. It's well worth a bit of time seeing how it works for you.